since you've been saved. Jesus, or Paul, wrote in the Scriptures, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I believe that lady was changed or transformed either by that message that Jesus spoke on, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. Or sometime before that event, she was so transformed and changed by the Lord Jesus Christ that all the, the whole purpose and plan for her to show up to the house was to thank him. She had a humiliation for her sin. And she, at the feet of Jesus, stood behind him, weeping uncontrollably, as if to say, thank you. Thank you for what you did in my life. Thank you for saving me. Thank you that when you said, come, and I came, that you gave me rest. I don't have to live the way I live anymore. I don't have to give myself to sin anymore. I don't need this ointment anymore, so I'm going to take what used to be used for Satan and his work and for sin, and I'm going to anoint you, and I'm going to use my life for God moving forward. All this, she didn't have to speak. She showed by her contrition. I can tell you today, that's what we are missing in Christianity today. We are not consumed and we are not moved by what Jesus has done for us. That we would be willing to embarrass ourselves, willing to put ourselves in a position of being disgraced and dishonored and made a public spectacle, we are not to that point that we're willing to make that commitment because we're too concerned about us and we're, not, we're forgetting what he did. He was a shame. He was made on the cross more shameful things than she had ever done. Now Jesus put it in perspective to the Pharisee, to Simon. He said, you could have done all the things that she did. But you didn't. You didn't even greet me with a kiss. You didn't wash my feet when I came in the house. You didn't anoint me. You didn't even acknowledge that I was even of any, anybody of, of significance to you. But this woman knew exactly who Jesus was. Because not only had she seen Jesus change other lives, but he had changed hers forever. And maybe you're here and you've never come in confrontation with the need of being saved from your sins. I remember that day in my life. I was 14. It was on December 9th, 1973 and I'll never forget it. We had moved from California, small town 20,000 to the Chicago area where my dad was going to go, going to, go to school. I was in a church service and the pastor began to give an invitation, began to talk about how important it was to give your heart to Jesus Christ. And, and in my heart, it, the emotion welled up in my heart to the point where I, I said, God, I know I'm a sinner. And I know I need to be saved. And I opened my heart to Jesus that day. And my life was never the same. <laughs> Now, <clears throat> have I been perfect? No. Not by any means. But I'm thankful for his forgiveness. I'm thankful that he was able to take a young boy that could have grown up and could have gone in a wrong direction, and he saved me at 14, knowing that down the road, that one day that I would surrender to be a pastor, and that 
all these years, I'd be involved in telling other people about this wonderful man who was laying on that carpet who the religious did not even know, but who a sinner who nobody would have anything to do with knew more than anybody in that room. I don't know what other religious people were there. I don't know what other dignitaries were there with Simon. Because the Pharisees were an echelon of people in that day that were very wealthy people. And so it could have been there were some government officials there. It could have been there were some very, very important people in that town that were there that day. But not one of them greeted Jesus. Not one of them recognized him as God. Not one of them recognized him as the Savior of the world. That lady knew that he was Messiah because he had changed her. Two things that you see. And Jesus recognizes them. He recognizes her humility. The Bible says, Whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved, in Romans 10, 13. That call is an interesting word because it's a call of desperation. It's a call saying to Jesus, I am hopeless, I am helpless, unless you save me, I cannot be saved. And that's exactly what that lady did days or weeks before she showed up at that feast. And just the fact that she began to weep uncontrollably, standing behind the feet of Jesus, all eyes on her, uninhibited at all, about what people were saying or thinking about her. But in, humili in, in humility, being willing to, to just stand there and weep. You, you know, there are a lot of people that, that will go, go like this. They don't, want to, they don't want to cry in public. They, they don't want people to see them cry. But not her. Because it wasn't about her. She had come. To tell Jesus what she thought of him. And to publicly, if you will, make her public profession of faith to everybody there. She was humble in her heart. And secondly, she had a love for Jesus that no one in that room had. That's why Jesus recognized it. He told that story. He said, Simon, he said, there were two that were debtors. And there was a creditor. The one debtor owed 500 and the other owed 50. Were they both debtors, yes or no? Yeah. And the one debtor that owed 500 pence represented this woman. The debtor that owed 50 pence represented Simon. The creditor was Jesus. And Jesus is standing in the room. And he is saying, she's forgiven. And Simon, you have every opportunity to be forgiven. But you are not willing to do what this woman did. To humble herself and to love me implicitly. The fact that she kissed his feet over and over and over, and then that wasn't enough to take her life, what, what used to be used for her livelihood, this ointment, she could have taken it, she could have sold it, she took it and she broke it and she anointed his feet. Some believe it was prophetic of the fact that he would go and he would die on the cross. He, as Messiah, would die for her. We need that humility, that humiliation of our sin, again, in the church. We need to recognize sin is exceeding sinful. That he's everything and we're nothing. That he paid for it 
and we can be thankful and grateful, just happy and thankful and joyful that he was willing to even do that for me and for you. And then to love him like nobody else because of all he's done for us. Let's bow our heads for just a moment. With our heads bowed and our eyes closed, let me ask you this question.